Today I want to talk a little bit about the raw food diet and I know I've talked on and off about this over the last well, year or two since I've been delving right into it but so what we have here today we have uh, Fran who actually lives around the corner from me in Brisbane Australia and today I'm going to give her my opinion on Fran's raw journey and why it's so common for people to blame sugar for their problems when actually it's the fat now let's listen to Fran's story as she explains it to us and I'm passionate about doing this because so many people go, oh, I tried that raw food thing, I you know, went to America, I followed all the gurus, I bought thousands of dollars of products, I did cleanses and fasts and sweat lodges and ayahuasca ceremonies and I'm, I'm worse off than I was at the start of it all or I'm not better than I wanted to be and you know, I've got weight issues, I've got fatigue issues, I'm addicted to crack out, what's going on here, the raw food thing, it's dogma, it's not real, it's, we need to eat grass fed animals and do what everyone else is doing. And that's why so many people in the raw food scene go full circle back to the standard Australian, standard American diet with the inclusion of you know, organic foods and they, and they think it's you know, different. But Anyway, so let's hear what Fran's got to say. Now listen carefully. My goal is to educate people. It's not to like write anyone off or whatever. It's to educate people so people don't make the same mistakes over and over and over or they understand why they made a mistake. So listen carefully with an objective mind and the ability to critically think. Something's kind of um, shown itself to me in my life that I, I really thought it was a good idea to to um, discuss and talk about in this video and see what you guys think. So as you probably know, I have a very, very sweet tooth. I've always had one. I remember even when I was a little kid. Here's the biggest mistake, the first mistake, and the most popular mistake is I've got a sweet tooth. My teeth are sweet, you know. I'm addicted to sugar, I'm a sweet tooth, it's bad, it's sort of my personality, I need sweet foods. I'll tell you what, there's not a single person on the planet who doesn't enjoy sweet foods. And even if people say, oh, I, eat, I eat mostly savory, I don't eat sweets. You open up their pantry, you go, oh, there's chocolate in here. You open up the fridge, you go, oh, there's ice cream in here, there's you know, sweet yogurt in here. Oh, wow, there's you know, lollies and candies and cookies and biscuits and cakes and all sorts of things. You don't like sweet foods. Oh, I don't eat those. That's right, you have them in your freezer in case the burglar breaks in your house and has some, a sweet tooth. Because we live in a society where people aren't proud to be sweet tooth people. In actual fact, every cell in the human body runs on glucose. So be proud of your sweet tooth. Embrace it as part of your human physiology. So... When I launched myself into a raw food diet for the first time, being 100% raw vegan in the beginning of last year, so that was January last year, I um, was eating a lot of desserts and a lot of fruits. I was eating desserts probably two, three times a day easily because I just loved them and I thought it was kind of healthy, you know. I, I thought agave, then I didn't realize that agave was so high in fructose and I was having a lot of agave thinking, yeah, this is great, it's healthy, I can eat it. Um, plenty of honey and loads of dates, so I was having a lot of sweet food, a lot of the sugars. So Fran totally forgets that most of the calories coming in these sweet desserts actually come from fat and the rest come from refined sugars and occasionally you have a few recipes with dates. So Fran was quick to assume it was the sugars in the fruit, when actual fact she's consuming refined sugar in honey and agave and consuming a whopping amount of fat. Most raw fooders, especially newbies, they consume over 60% of their calories from fat. People say, Harley, no, no, that's not true. I'll show you what, I'll show you one of the most popular raw food recipes out there. It's banana, macadamia, nut fudge cookies. And we've got a cup of raisins, one cup of walnuts, one cup of macadamias, a cup of bananas. So people might think, oh, that's, that's all fruit, you know, there's lots of fruit and there's a bit of nuts. Let's do the caloric breakdown. Again, my intention here today is to educate. So we have... All the calories, chronometer is a great little thing to download. And if you look at here, we have over almost 70% of the calories coming from fat. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then Fran's not just doing this once in a week, which is fine, you can do that. Especially if you're athletic. If you're athletic, you can eat more calories from fat, but you still need, you know, low fat, definitely. Yeah, under 15%, 10% ideal, under. So Fran's eating 70% of her calories, not just for a snack, but she said two or three times a day. You know what I mean? And no one's making a dessert out of just dates. I mean, that's the ideal dessert, but in the raw food world, it's, you know, fudge cookies and macadamia cookies and all these brownies and chocolates. And again, if you do the math, 
at least 50% to 70%, even to 90% calories coming from fat. Now, that is not healthy. doesn't matter if it's raw, organic, or vegan, or whatever. Eating that much fat daily, you're going to notice a marked health decline, especially if you're sedentary, like in Fran's situation. You know, sometimes I'd make a smoothie in the morning, and the smoothie would be really sweet as well. So I was, I was kind of moving more and more towards having a lot of sweet food, maybe even more sweet food than savory fruit, food in my diet. So here we have Franz just thinking it's the sugar, 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 and she's saying, I have hypoglycemia, which we know hypoglycemia refers to low blood sugar. So it means you're not consuming enough carbohydrates, or if you are consuming enough, the fat is coating the cells, it's coating your insulin receptor sites, so the, the sugar cannot enter the cell. So that causes hypoglycemia, and it can cause hyperglycemia, you know what I mean? Hypoglycemia is caused when the sugar cannot enter the cell, the blood sugar rises, then the pancreas is forced to release your insulin, and that just sucks it all down, and then you get the hypoglycemia thing. So it's just, you know, so pre-diabetic symptoms can be hypo or hyperglycemia. Check out any medical physiology textbook on diabetes. So what we have here is, you know, Fran's eating, you know, what she thinks is high carbohydrate, when in actual fact it's not. It's just because she's sweetening her fat with sugars she thinks it's a high carbohydrate diet but if we look at it just like I said before you know in those desserts and she'll be getting most of the calories from those so I could, I'd put money on it Fran's getting at least 50 if not more percent of the calories coming from fat and that recipe we have here that's almost 70 percent of calories coming from fat so no wonder Fran had a hypoglycemia issues and no wonder I mean she looks like she could be an elite mouth on it but she's not fit at all she's not you know cardio fit and because that's doesn't have the energy to train you know, there's a difference between being able to sit still and having energy versus physical energy where you can actually you know, go out there and, and train and, and be quite fit. So that's why we see a lot of raw food gurus promoting the anti-fruit thing. None of them are fit. I mean, people say about Harley, what, what about Gabriel Cousins? You know, he's, he's sort of, he can do like a few push-ups. Let's have a look what Gabriel promotes. It's going to move a little fast. Our biggest concern, quite frankly, is people getting insulin shock from getting off insulin so quickly. The diet that works. Hang on, now listen real carefully to what Dr. Gabriel Cousins is about to say to these diabetic patients. Listen real carefully now. Best is a high fiber, high carbohydrate, low protein, low fat diet. That's the diet that works the best. Hang on, did I just hear right? Did Dr. Gabriel Cousins just say high fiber, high carbohydrate, low protein, low fat? Nah, I, I heard wrong, didn't I? Uh, let me rewind that. The diet that works the best is a high fiber, high carbohydrate, low protein, low fat diet. That's the diet that works the best. So there we go, Gabriel Cousins even admitting that a high carbohydrate, low fat lifestyle is best for blood sugar issues, but then in his books he sometimes he says no, and, I mean Gabriel Cousins, you know, he changes his mind like he changes his cactus plants, and that's fine, Gabriel's a great guy, but it's good to see what, how confused some people are. Whenever, some, whenever someone says, oh, no one program works for everyone, you know, like, I mean that doesn't work, but I don't really know what does work, I mean, you know, just go and see different homeopaths, naturopaths, psychopaths, doctors and stuff and just get different opinions and, I mean, I, I don't know, like, just keep looking, keep searching. It's like, how long do we have to search, really? Do we have the rest of our life? Or do we, can we just, boom, get it together and follow the one program that all humans thrive on? High fruit, low fat. If you want to eat grains, eat your grains. But high fruit, low fat, vegan, boom, it works every time. The thing is, we don't live in a society where that's supported. If you sit down and have three bananas, people go, you know, they f start freaking out. But if you make a little raw food dessert with 2,000 calories in it, and it's, you know, just fits in your plate, and you eat that, people don't really know how many calories are in there. They're just, oh, you're having a, a reasonable portion amount. That's okay. But if you have, like, half a watermelon with 500 calories in it, people go, half a watermelon? You're overeating. You know what I mean? So we don't live in a society where the supports the 811 style, the fruiting style, and I accept that. That's the main reason people don't do well on it, you know, is because they under-eat because they listen to the status quo, they don't understand calories. I mean, you got to count calories so you know you're getting enough. Otherwise, you, you'll obey the status quo portion sizes. You know what I mean? If I obeyed status, my conditioning from the past, I don't eat three bananas per meal times 
th uh, three meals a day, it'd be like 900 calories a day. Can you imagine 900 calories a day? <laughs> You know, and, and, and people are doing this in the raw food scene. They're eating 900 to 1500 calories a day. They're getting dropped off the deep end in a couple of months and going, oh, I tried that raw food thing. I was mega disciplined. I was eating so much fruit, even though it's only 900 to 1500 calories a day, eating so much fruit. And everyone sitting around me said, I'm eating too much fruit. And, you know, no. I'd, and you ask them, how many calories did you eat? Oh, heaps. You know, it's like, how many did you eat? I don't really know. I don't count calories. That's your problem. You don't count calories. So when someone sells you a raw food bar, you wouldn't have a clue how much fat's in it. You wouldn't have any clue how many calories you're getting. You know what I mean? And when you're trying to eat, eat some fruit, you wouldn't know how many calories you're getting. So then you expect, you wonder why you have hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia, or weight loss issues, or weight gain issues, or whatever, or inability to maintain, sustain, and obtain high fitness levels. So calories is like fuel. You don't drive to a gas station or a petrol station, fill your car up, and just don't look at the, when you're filling up, oh, I'm, I'm going to look over here, I'm going to transmutate my kundalini essences to the moonlight because it's that time of month. You look at how much fuel you're putting in the car. So why not do that with your body? Why not go, okay, I'm, I've had you know, 2,800 calories today, I actually need more than that. I want to keep eating until I get my market, my target. Because society says not to do that. Society says, just stop when your plate's empty. Don't go back for seconds. You're a pig. Just cram as much high-fat grease food on your plate. And if you're raw food, do the same. Cram as much high-fat grease on your plate and just have one plate. Just pile it up as much as you can. Make it so caloric dense that it's just a small portion. No one's going to give you any crap for eating your real foods. So that's why people don't succeed on like an 811 style program. It's so natural, but we live in such an unnatural society. People were like, they freak out at how much you actually need to eat. You know, like, I've got a friend who's a zookeeper and he looks after the chimpanzees and some bonobos. And I said, you know, well, they eat 30 bananas in a sitting. And he's like, mate, they will keep eating until the food is gone. You know, they'll keep eating and eating and eating and eventually they'll just stop. And that's what we do. We feed them as much as they want. And I said, do you have any fat chimps? He's like, they don't get fat on fruit, man. So the chimps in the zoo eating as much as they can get, they're not getting fat. Simple as that. So it's the same with humans. Eat as much food as you can. Learn your calories so you can dissolve your whole dogmatic I should be calorie restricting, breatharian, anorexic, bulimic paradigm. You know, literally, metaphorically, metaphysically dissolve that and get into understanding how many calories you need. And if you're an adult, it's going to be you know, 3,000 calories a day plus when someone yesterday in the forum is saying, oh, I'm really skinny and I'm, I look anorexic and there's statistics for anorexic, their height and body weight, their BMIs are under 17.5. And I'm like, you're not going to build your body on 2,500 calories a day, man. You, you need at least 5,000 calories a day plus. You know what I mean? Plus. You can't, you know, read the human biology of starvation by Dr. Keyes, you know. So I understand people go, oh, Harley, that's too much work and that's inconvenient counting calories. Getting dropped off the deep end's inconvenient. Wasting five years of your life chasing the raw food paradigm around what you know, inconvenient. Where you can just get it literally in a week. Understand? Shit! I need at least three thousand calories as an adult. If I got kids, I need more calories. If I want to be fit, I need more calories. If I got a business, I want to need more calories. Almost gave me the finger. You know, I need more calories. If you want to give people the finger, you need more calories. If you want to be passionate, live a you know, purposeful life, you need more calories. If your boss is a wank, you need more calories. If you're getting harassed by people like me, you need more calories. You need more calories, 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 calories. Fruit's the best source. Eat as much as you want. And whenever you cut your fruit intake, man, you cut your life. When you cut your carbs, you cut your life. You cut Why? Because you cut your glycogen. So people are all about breatharians. That's a whole other video, man. Breatharians is absolute bullshit. It's anorexia in the health food scene. So that's another video. I won't get into that now. Let's continue on with Fran's raw food journey. There are healthy and unhealthy ways to do everything. And we often find this in the vegan diet as well. When someone goes vegan, we often think, oh, they're so healthy, they're vegan. But there are very unhealthy vegans out there. They're there are vegans that eat high sugars, high carbohydrates, and high fat. So they really get into the... Um, the breads and they really get into also soys and any of the um, milk and, and meat substitutes so you can definitely find high sugars and high carbs especially and also high fats. 
in those diets. And you know, high fats if you, it is fine if your constitution suits it, and if you eating high fats that are good. So I'm a little bit hesitant saying that, but then there are, you know, there's good and bad of everything. There's this, this um, duality is everywhere in life. So there's always going to be the exact polar opposite of it. So what Fran's done is she's just, you know, contradicted what she says. Now she's aware of that. She's confused and she gets to the whole thing. Oh, there's no one program for everyone. Just do what works for you. I mean, I'll say you can't do high carbohydrate, but I don't really know. And that's right, because all the successful long-term vegans, what do they have in common? This applies to raw fooders as well. They eat a crap load amount of their calories from carbohydrates. 80% of the calories coming from carbohydrates plus. You look at the China study, Dr. Neil Bernard, Dr. Ornish, Dr. Esselstein, Dr. McDougall, Doug Graham, Ruth Heinrich, all these raw food, vegan promoters, athletes, successful people eating at least 80% of the calories coming from carbohydrates. So when you're, when you're and that's why... Fran isn't a vegan because her paradigm is like, you're vegan, you can't eat too much carbohydrates. And that's why vegans who go on low-carb diets, they get dropped off the deep end and they write books about it like Leah Keith, you know. So carbs are your friend, fruit's the best, you know what I mean? I understand. No one wants to eat fruit, fine. Eat with you whatever carbohydrates you prefer, but don't let anyone tell you that fruit's bad. The main, people, the main problems people have with fruit is they eat it too fast, they eat it unripe, most people don't want to know what a ripe banana looks like. They think it's like they think the spot bananas, the rotten bananas. They eat citrus way too tart. C citrus should be sugar, 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 sugar sweet. People avoid dates, or they have one or two or three dates, saying, "Oh, that's, that's enough," you know. <laughs> so those are the main problems of c fruit consumption. People don't eat enough of it. They eat it unripe. They eat it too fast. They dehydrated, and they just eat fruit when they should be should be drinking some water. So again, I've covered this a lot in detail in my other videos, so just refer back to my channel and check it out. Let's listen to more what Fran does. And then there's the, the opposite, the other end of the scale with the raw food diet, which is, is um, so many desserts and so many sugars and so, much, so many high glycemic and high fructose fruits in the diet, which can really unbalance the body. It can create more candidas, fungus, yeast and molds. It can do that whole sugar spiking thing which happens so easily with me. So Fran's convinced that she's you know, tr tried the high sugar thing and it did not work. What Fran actually did was do the high fat thing as I just, just explained with the calories coming from those little recipes at least 50 to 70 percent of calories coming from fat that is not a high carbohydrate program that is not a high carbohydrate program that is a high fat program once your calories are going over 20 percent of calories from fat you're eating a lot of fat you're eating too much fat and if you're in Fran's case where she's not too athletic you, sh you know you should eat a lot less fat because your fat gets processed through your lymphatic system and if you're sedentary your fat's just slodging around in your blood, thickening your blood, lowering your oxygen uptake, absorption, and transfer to your cells, and life sucks. And then you eat something sweet again, which is just like a macadamia nut cookie or a chocolate raw brownie. And you think, oh, it's the sugar making me feel shit. There's actually the cacao just thrashing your adrenal glands. It's all that fat, all that nut fat and oil just sludging around your system. Then you, get, then you think, oh, maybe I need to eat animal products to get some energy because I'm pretty tired. And yeah, um, you know. So again, so Fran is like the other people go, oh, I tried that high sugar thing, they tried the high fat thing. Or if people go on the 811 program and you ask them, how many calories a day did you eat? Oh, heaps, man, heaps. How many oh, I don't know, I don't count calories. So you're under eating then. No, I was eating heaps. My grandma said I was eating too many peaches. You know, my, my next to neighbor said I was eating too many watermelons, man. <laughs> So you were under eating then. Oh man, you're judgmental, man. I'm, I'm out of here. You guys are crazy, man. Like, what's with the heaviness, man? It's just peace and love and prana, man. That's what happens when people get like undercarbed. They get all like floaty, airy, fairy, spiritual, spacey, wacy, tripped out, kundalini, chakra balanced and imbalanced. And then they, when someone tries to help them, they get all like, take it personally. So again, critically think, eat enough carbohydrates so nothing you take personally. As soon as you start taking things personally, especially when people are trying to help you, then you know you haven't had enough carbohydrates, then you can't hydrate and you can't sleep properly. So let's listen to more of Fran's journey. In um, Arizona as well about dehydrated food, if you remember, I might link to it underneath this video on my blog, how I um, 
I was eating tons of dehydrated food because I was traveling, it was easy to carry around and when I was at the longevity conference I was eating lots of dehydrated food as well just because it was easy to access and I really, I really increased the vata in my body so much, I went really spacey, I, um, my digestive system went completely out of whack and I just didn't feel quite right. And I No, what is, you didn't increase your vata in your body, friend. You increased the fat in your blood. You increased the fat in your lymphatic system. You decreased your oxygen uptake, absorption, and transfer to your cells. That's why you felt spacey. It wasn't anything to do with your dosha type. No wonder all these high-fat gurus that you went to longevity conference, and they all drink a shitload of organic coffee and cacao to perk up so they can give, it, give the infomercial to the audience. So again, it wasn't your vata type, your dosha type, your pitta type, whatever, eating too much fat, Clogging lymph system, clogging your blood, sludging it out, can't think, boom, easy. So all you needed to do was get rid of all your crackers and nuts and just hit the fruit and greens, get sufficient amount of calories, keep your diet under 10% total calories of fat, learn calories, it's grade 2 maths, and you will smash it. Of dehydrated foods. Another thing, just because it raw, it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy. And often dehydrated foods as well, they're high in sugars as well. Here we go again. Um, because there'll be, you know, like um, raw food junk, raw <laughs> junk food bars. So there'll be like a, a, um, a bar that's disguised as a healthy bar. But, you know, it's better than eating a Mars bar or a Snickers bar or something. Obviously way, way, way better than that. Way better than that. So if you're in a transitional phase, this stuff is actually quite good. But again... My problem with transitional food, I don't call it transitional food anymore, I used to. I call it smashing yourself off the raw vegan bandwagon food because it's so high in fat, low in carbohydrates, but it tastes sweet because cause it had up, yeah, refined sugars added to it. You add refined sugar to oil, it's sweet. When only 5% of the calories might come from carbohydrates and 95% of the calories come from fat, it still tastes sweet. So people go, oh, this is really sugary. You get 95% of calories coming from fat. So people have these raw food transition foods, and I don't call them transition because people, what they do is they get hungry, and they go, I want some bread, so I'm going to have raw bread. You know, cooked vegan bread is super low fat. You know, raw vegan bread is super high fat, so they have the bread, they're having a carbohydrate craving, they have the bread, they're not meeting the carbohydrate needs, so the glycogen is still low, and they're getting a whopping amount of fat. So no wonder people just go, oh man, this raw food thing sucks, and I can't eat fruit because there's too much sugar. Um... What else can I do? Oh, I'll go back to stand American diet, stand Australian diet, and I'll keep eating animal products. And that's what happens. Raw food gurus, pay attention. Again, friends of the mindset, fat's good, you know, it's cool, and sugar's your problem. So what, if Fran doesn't get out of this mindset, this paradigm, she's just going to destroy her health, have constant cravings, you know, emaciation, binge prone, depression, tendencies, chronic fatigue, stimulant dependence, questioning of vegetarian or vegan ethic or whatever she's choosing, and just confused and at the will and at the whim of all these marketing gurus out there who know exactly what they're doing, man. These guys know exactly what they're doing. They promote the low carbohydrate diet, and then they come in with all these anti venoms and alexas and superfood symptom curers, like stimulants like maca, cacao, krakow, reishi, ayahuasca, MSM, animal products, deer placenta, ant extract, colostrum, all these things to try and help people snap out of the, the fat coma, the carb deficiencies, the glucose exhaustion, because they're eating low carbohydrate diets. You know, the organic coffee is a trend now. Everyone's trying to get in the organic coffee and stuff like that. And I'll tell you what, man, like, if you need drugs to get through your day, you're eating wrong, man. And you're not eating enough carbohydrates. You need more sleep. You need more hydration. And dosha type, I mean, people go, oh, but my dosha type doesn't allow me to eat bananas, man. You know, so, man, if your dosha type doesn't allow you to eat sweet, juicy fruit like bananas and oranges and mangoes, man, that's not a freaking, that's not natural. That's like some dogmatic. Dogma means opinion. Bananas are from nature, man. You can peel a banana, you can eat it, it tastes good, you don't need to cook it, prep it, spice it, slice it, boil it, boil it, toast it, microwave, fry it, radiate it, 
you just peel it and eat it, man. That's nature. You don't know, you know, walk up to an animal and just peel it and eat it. You walk up to fruit, you peel it, eat it. Don't worry about your dosha type, man. That's just some bogus system created by the human ego that has no place in nature. Imagine walking up to a, you know, a peregrine falcon and walking up to the falcon and going, falcon, you're eating that chicken, but your dosha type is different. You know what I mean? How come horses don't have different dosha types? How come horses, if they're big horses or little horses, they eat the same? A big horse just eats more. A little horse just eats less. A pregnant horse eats more. How come horses don't have different dosha types? How come dogs don't? You know what I mean? How come sheep don't? How come goats and chickens and rats and bison, they don't have different dosha types? They all eat the same food for the same given species, regardless of where they are on the planet. A bonobo chimpanzee in a zoo in Norway will eat the same diet as a bonobo in Sydney, Australia, or a bonobo in the jungle, you know, in, in Africa. The exception being maybe different variety of plant foods, but they will have the same amount of calories, the same caloric ratio, nutrients of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Exactly. The, the, the chimps in the zoo in Norway don't get fed mustard seeds, sardines, and brown bread, because that's what's local to that region. They get fed what physiologically designed they're adapted to. So changing your diet, because of what some book wrote, that's dogma. Changing your diet to what your physiology speaks to you with your hands, teeth, claws, digestive system, and your heart above all, that is not dogma. That is physiology. That is fact. Follow your heart. Follow your sweet tooth. Get rid of the fat gurus selling you bullshit and start listening to the common sense. Thanks for watching. And again, fuck all you vegan Nazis that have shit to say to me. I don't fucking care what you say, lies that, that I am God. Um, we are God, all of us. Fuck you vegan Nazis. <laughs> Last video I did, I realized I forgot a major important ingredient in the chicken tartare, and that is royal jelly, because that gets rid of all the possibility of bacteria and all that stuff.